What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. We're going to continue with our HTML tutorial for beginners. And in this video, we're going to be going over formatting your page content and using tags in their appropriate places. So we're going to be looking at some tags that we've probably already seen and also adding some new tags as well. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, take a moment, subscribe and click on the notification icon. So whenever I create new videos, you'll be notified. Also, you can find some code snippets on my website, pixamrub.com. I'll leave a link in the description area, so definitely check that out. You can easily just hover over the code snippets, click on the copy link. It'll copy it to your clipboard, and then you can use it within your text editor. We're going to continue using VS Code for this series of videos, but feel free to use whatever text editor you feel comfortable using. All right, so let's jump to the editor. So what I want to do here is go to the root of our folder. Remember, we're working with an HTML folder on our desktop, and I'm going to create a new file and call it formatting.html. So now we have a new blank document. So what I want to do next, so I want to go over here. I'm going to copy everything that's here in this file, and I'm going to paste it right here. Just a quick overview. Remember, we have our doc type, HTML. We have our opening HTML tag with the language attribute of English. We have our head tag. Then inside of the head tag, we have some basic meta with our meta character set set to UTF-8, our author set to my name, and obviously you set it to yours. We have our meta description. Now remember, the meta description is going to be unique to each individual HTML document that's going to display either a page or a post or something of that nature. In these videos, I'm just keeping the description the same because I wanted to stand out and show you that the meta description should be about 155 characters in length. Then we have our title. We have our meta viewport set to with device width initial scale one. And then we're linking to a style sheet or CSS style sheet within our CSS folder. And we're linking to a JavaScript file, our scripts.js in our JavaScript folder. Now in those files, they're empty right now, but I just wanted to show you how you would link to them. And we'll be using that later on. And then we're using a favicon, and that's linking into our images folder, looking for the favicon.png. And these are just commented out right here. Close off our head. We have our body here. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Okay, so now let's get started with formatting our code. Now remember, we're going to be trying to get our website to look like this. This is a partially finished project right here. I'm just going to double click on the index.html. And this is a partially finished project. And this is the ultimate goal of what we're going to try to accomplish. Let me X out of that. Now I'm back into my desktop file explorer. I'm going to go into my HTML folder here. This is our project folder. Right now you see we have the three files. Index, HTML, 5.html formatting.html and our three folders there. Okay, so let's go back to the editor. And now from here, let's first talk about our headings. You see we have the heading one here. And in the previous videos, we've we've touched on the headings themselves, but now we're going to go more in depth about them. All right, so we have the heading one there. We could have a heading two that has an opening and closing matching pair of tags there. And now I'm just going to copy this. Paste, paste, paste. That should be six. Let's see. I'm just going to change that to heading three. Heading four. Heading five. Heading six. And let me get some separation there. Let me change that one. Okay. So now we have our six headings here. Now, what does the heading tag represent? Well, the heading tags, they represent semantic information for the browsers themselves. It provides information in terms of the hierarchy for the actual content. So for example, if we are on the formatting.html page, right? Let me actually go up here, the title, call that formatting, HTML formatting. So if we go here, the H1 tag for this particular page should be something like HTML formatting. 
because that's the title. So we don't want to have our site title be the H1 in this case. That will be saved for like the home page or and the blog page. So we don't want to have our site title on this page be the H1 because we want to tell the browser that the actual title of the page itself is the most important in terms of how it should be recognized. So in this case, we want the HTML formatting to be the H1. If you are inside of an article, you can have the H2. And let's say this is going to be for a sub portion of your content. So let's say here, the title of this page is HTML formatting. So this can be secondary towards that actual title. So we can say how to format your HTML. And then you would use the H3 when it's going to be a sub point of the H2. So let's say we're going to call this your heading tags. And then you generally won't be using H4s, H5, and H6s too often, but when you do, they have to be a sub point of the previous heading. So for instance, the H3 was heading tags. So how can we make a sub point of the heading tags? What I'll just say here is sub point of heading tags. And then over here for H5, we'll do the same thing. Sub point for the sub point. I'll just call it like that. And then the same thing for the H6. Okay, so just to try to clarify this, what we're saying here is the H1 is the most important heading tag for the actual page itself. The H2 is going to be the second most important and is typically a sub point for the H1. And you're going to try to make sure that your content is structured properly so that way it has a proper flow. And then the H3, the same thing, it's going to be a sub point for that one. And then the H4, H5, and H6, they follow that same hierarchy. Okay, so now we save this. Let's go back to our file explorer. Now what I want to do is I want to double click on the formatting.html. I'm going to make this bigger here. So we see that the H1 here is the largest item on this page itself. Then we have the H2. It's a little bit smaller, but it's still bigger than the H3, then the H4, H5, and H6. And then we have our paragraph. Mind you, these are the default styling from the browser. You could always change this up in CSS, but one thing you don't want to do is use the heading tags for formatting purposes in terms of getting them to be larger or smaller for particular content. That would be a mistake because it gives the wrong information to the browsers and to screen readers and accessibility devices. So you want to use it for its intended purpose and which is to provide a hierarchy for your heading tags on your page. So let's go back to our text editor. All right, so now we covered the heading tags. We've already seen the paragraph tag here, but now what I want to do is since we're talking about formatting, I'm going to get some lorem ipsum. Lorem ipsum is generic text that you could use to fill in some of your content. So I'll do a search for that. And we could just go to this generator page right here and we can decide how many paragraphs we want. So I just want one paragraph. So I can say generate, copy to clipboard. And then here, I'm just gonna paste that in and then save it. So now we have the opening and closing paragraph tags that we've seen before. But now we're going to format this. Let me duplicate this a couple of times. Okay, so in our first paragraph, let's say we wanted to make this line right here bold. What can we do? Well, there's two things we can do. The first one is we could use the B tag. I'm going to cut the closing one from there. I'm just going to paste it here save that. So this will bold it. Let's go back to the browser. Let's reload. And now you see that that first sentence there is bolded. Let's inspect the elements and you see it's bolded. All right. So that works. But now is that providing semantic meaning to the browser and to screen readers? All it's really doing is just changing the way it looks. It doesn't really provide any extra emphasis or any extra meaning 
for the browser itself. So visually it looks bold, but it's not really saying anything extra. Let's go back to our editor and see how we can provide extra semantic meaning to it. Okay, so for this one here, right here, this line, I'm gonna use the strong tag. And this is gonna do pretty much the same thing as the bold tag in terms of appearance, but it's gonna provide extra semantic meaning to the browser itself and to screen readers and accessibility devices. So we save that, let's go back to our browser, let's reload, and now we see that it's bold as well, but it's providing extra semantic meaning. Now, visually it looks the same, but it makes a difference. So when you wanna provide some extra meaning to a particular line or to a particular piece of your content, you could use the strong tag. If you just wanna bold something without adding extra meaning, then you could just use the B tag. I tend to use the strong tag for the most part, because if I'm gonna try to drive more attention to a particular piece of content, it's gonna be for a specific reason. So the strong tag, in my opinion, should be used most often. Let's go back to our editor. Let's take this line right here. Let's say now I wanna italicize it. You can use the I tag for italicize. Cut that. Save that. Let's go back to our browser. And now you see that right here, this is italicized right there. Now this is also not really providing any extra emphasis to the content that we're trying to italicize, similar to the B tag. So we can change that up. Let me go back to the editor. I'm gonna go right here to the same type of content. And instead of using the I tag, the italicized tag, I'm gonna use the M tag for emphasis. Save that, let's reload. And now it visually looks the same, but it's providing additional meaning to the browser and to screen readers and accessibility devices. So like the strong tag, I tend to use the emphasis tag more, most often. So the I tag follows the same pattern, meaning you have your opening tag with the lesser than symbol, the I and the greater than symbol. And then for the closing, you have your lesser than symbol, your slash, the I, and then the greater than symbol. Same thing for the B, follows that pattern. The strong tag does the same thing in terms of the pattern, and then the emphasis tag also. Now, let's say you wanted to highlight some text, but you didn't want to bold it, you didn't want to italicize it, or you didn't want to provide any extra emphasis or something like that. Let's go over here, this line right here. We can use the HTML tag for marking it. So, be the lesser than symbol. Let me cut the closing part of that. Let me bring that over here. So we have the mark tag right here, the opening mark tag, and then the closing mark tag. Let's save that. Go back to our browser. Let's reload the page. And now we see that it's highlighted yellow. So that's the mark tag itself. Let's go back to our editor. Another thing we could do is let's say we wanted to share some formatted text. So I'm gonna go down here to a new line right here. I'm gonna put a regular P tag and I'm going to go and type out some regular information here. So this is, and let's say I wanna go to a new line. Okay, so let's say I wanted to have some content for whatever reason, go onto separate lines. You would think that I could just go to the next line, right? Well, white space in HTML doesn't act the way you think it does. So if I save this and I go to the browser and I reload, this is some multi-line content. Is it displaying as I want it to? The answer is no. If I inspect that, we see that here, it's generating itself in the back end or on the back end of the browser at least on multiple lines, but it's being displayed on one line in the browser itself. And that's because of the way that HTML and white space works. So let's say if you wanted this to actually be on multiple lines, what can you do? Let's go back to the editor. You could always just use 
the closing p tag there. And then let's just copy this one right here. I'm just going to try to clean this up. All right, let's save that. Now, that will display on multiple lines, right? And in an upcoming video, I'll go over the whole entire block level elements and inline level elements and the box model, things of that nature. But this is just a preview of how this content works. Let's go back to the browser. Let's reload. Now it's on multiple lines, but you see what's happening here. There's some spacing because by default, if we go over here to any of the paragraphs, we can go to computed, raise this up, and you see that there's um, some spacing, 16 pixels, after the paragraph itself, right there. That's being automatically generated by the browser. And CSS can resolve this for you, but you're not going to always want to have CSS do it for you. So let's go back to the editor. What I'm going to do now is get rid of these p tags. And what I'll do is I'll introduce you to the pre-formatted tag itself. So now we have our pre-tag here, our pre-formatted opening tag, and we have our closing here. Save that. Let's go back to the browser. Let's reload. And now you see that it's going onto multiple lines and it's formatted how we want it. Doesn't have the extra padding or margin in between each line. Let's go back to the editor. Let's say we want this one to be tabbed in two more times. Let's save that. Back to the browser. Reload. And now that's indented two more times. So what the pre-formatted tag does, the pre-tag, is that it keeps the formatting that you intended in the HTML code. But you see here it also used different font or different styling. And this is the default for the browsers. Again, CSS can change all this. If you want it to look similar to how your paragraphs look, you can change that. But generally, we'll keep the pre-formatted text to be different. So now, let's go back to our editor. Now let's say we wanted to share a code snippet. So for instance, I'm going to go back actually to my website real quick. I'm going to grab this code snippet right here. Let's go back to our editor. Now we can use the code tag. Let's go back to the browser. Go back to our page. And let's reload. And now you see we have the headings there in that manner. But wait, it's not showing our code the way we want it to look. We inspect the elements. We see we have the H1s there, but we don't have the actual tags there. Why is this? Well, in one of the upcoming videos, I'll go over special characters within HTML. But for now, what I'll show you is the actual character entities for these. Let's go back to the editor. And if I actually want to display this in the browser, the H1 tags, what I would do here is use the actual entity name because What's happening is the browser is coming to the H1 tag and it's going to render it as an H1 tag. So it's not going to display it on the front end. So we have to kind of short circuit that by using the actual entity name. And for the less than part, it's going to be the ampersand, LT, and then semicolon. And bring this up. I'm going to make this bigger for here. We have the lesser than symbol right here. And then for the greater than, it's going to be the ampersand gt semicolon just like that and now let me copy this and then i'll copy this right here and let's see how that works let's save it go back to the browser and let's reload and now you see that we're actually showing the h1 tag there and it's inside of our code tags right here and it's showing it a little bit different than it would the paragraph. Kind of similar to the pre-formatted text, but in code display or computer code display. Now you just saw how to use the code tag. And I also very quickly introduced you to the HTML entities if you want to display your code with the actual code snippets in the browser. Let's go ahead and duplicate that for the rest of the headings here. Go back to the editor. I'm going to copy that. And do the same thing for this. 
And then same thing here. Okay, so now let's save that. Let's go back to our browser, reload, and now you see they were displaying it all here. But Houston, we have a problem. Why is it all going on one line? Even though in our editor we had it on multiple lines, here it's displaying it as one line. The code tag works very well in conjunction with the preformatted tag. So now let's go back to our editor. Let me copy this here. I'm going to cut this. Save it. So now we're using our preformatted tag here in conjunction with our code tag and the actual HTML entities for the lesser than and greater than symbols in the appropriate places. Take a moment and make sure yours looks like that. And now let's go back to the browser. Notice real quick how it's on one line. Let's reload. And now there are multiple lines. And if we inspect the element, go into our code right here, we see how that's working. Okay, let's go back to our editor. Let's say we have some text that for whatever reason we want to make it look smaller within our paragraph. So I'm going to go to this line right here. And I'm just going to use a small tag. Cut that out. Paste it there. Save it. So we have our opening small tag here and our closing small tag. Let's go back to the browser and let's see how that looks. Let's reload. And it might be tough to see, but right over here in this paragraph, this section here, the text is a little bit smaller than the text to its left and right. If we go down to the developer tools, we can see right here that our small tag is um, a little bit smaller. And of course you can change this with CSS. Right now it says font size smaller. I'll show you real quick if you wanted to. We can say font size, let's say eight pixels. And now you see it's really small. That's styling it with CSS, but the default is just going to make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, let's go back to our editor. And now let's go on to the subscript and the superscript. Let's move to this paragraph here. I'm going to make that bold for now because I'm not trying to really give real semantic meaning to this, but I just want to make it easier for us to identify the text to the right for the demonstration. The first one is subscript. Now what is that? Let's use our sub tag. And now let me paste that here. So we have our opening sub tag right here and our closing sub tag here. Let's save that, go back to the browser, let's reload. And now over here, you see that this text is lower than the regular line text right here. So that's the subtext right there. Inspect that. You see that right there. And you see what it's doing here. Vertical on line sub, font size smaller. Let's go back to the editor. Let's go to the next line. And let's use our superscript tag. Right here. And actually, let's take this right here. And put it in between so you can see the difference. Okay, so we have our opening superscript tag right there, SUP, and then we have our closing superscript tag right there. Save that. Let's reload. So we have our subscript here, our regular line of text for our paragraph, and then we have our superscript, which is above it. And then we go back into our regular paragraph text right there. We inspect this. Now you see that vertical align super, which means it's going up, and font size smaller. Now, sometimes you're going to see that some text gets deleted, or you're going to see that in a website, on a page, if content is going to be taken out, but they want to show that it was there before, they might have a line going through it. How do they do that? We can use our delete tags, cut that out, paste it right there, let's save that, let's reload, and now you see that this line right here has a line going through it text decoration line through for the deleted tag. And you see, we just have our opening tag here and our closing tag here. Now, let's say this is gonna be the new text that's inserted. So we can use our insert tag in that manner. Let's cut this out. 
paste it right there, save it, let's reload. And now the inserted text has an underline underneath it. So now let's say we want to do something different here. Let me go get a clean paragraph. I'll grab this one. Actually, we'll just work with this one right here. Okay, so let's say you're within your paragraph and you want to have a line break somewhere, but you don't want to use the pre tags. Let's go here. We could use the BR tag or the line break tag. And you might see it like this or like this with the um, self closing part of it. And that's because this is a self closing or individual tag that doesn't have a matching tag. Either way is correct, but we're going to stick to the BR like that. Save it. Let's reload. And now you see right here, we have a line break. We inspect that element. We see we have our BR tag right there. Let's say we wanted to have some form of separation within our content, separated by different topics or different logical groups or something of that nature. But we can use the horizontal rule. And it's also referenced like a thematic break. So let's say here, this paragraph, this content, it's going to be separated from the content below. Besides using the sections to separate content for semantic meaning, we could also use the horizontal rule to provide some separation as well. So it's just the HR tag. And one thing you would have noticed by now is that it's a self closing tag. The BR tag is self closing and the HR tag as well. Save that. Let's reload. And now you see we have this horizontal rule, this line separating the paragraph above from the content below. Now let's talk about how we can insert some quotes or quotations within our content and properly cite them. Let's go back to our editor. Over here, or actually above it, let's say we want to have a quote. Well, what I could do to add a quote here is use the block quote tag. We have the opening and closing block quote tag there. And then I'm going to put in a quote from Ken Thompson. And he says, one of my most productive days was throwing away 1,000 lines of code. And then, Right underneath the quote itself, I could use the site tag. Okay, let's save this. Let's go back to the browser and see how that looks. And then we see here, we have this um, line of text right here. One of my most productive days was throwing away 1,000 lines of code. Ken Thompson. So we have our block quote, inspect the element, and then we have our site right there, site tag, Ken Thompson. Let's always validate our code. Let's see if what we're doing here is valid. Copy it all, go back here, paste it in, and check. Document checking completed, no errors or warnings to show. Okay, so we're good. So far, the code that we've been writing has been correct. Now let's go back to our editor. This is for a longer line of quotes. But let's say you're inside of a um, paragraph and you have a short quote that you just want to show as a quotation. You can use your Q tag. Which is your Q opening tag and then the closing one there. Let's go back to the browser. Let's reload. And now we just have quotation marks right here. So this is for a block of quotes or a block quote. And this is for a regular inline quote. But now in the block quote, we could also do something else. If we want to link to or cite the actual address of where we're taking the quote from or something of that nature, we can do that as well. First thing, let me go here. I'm going to Google Ken Thompson. So he is an American pioneer of computer science. I'll copy the link. I'll go back to the editor. And then inside of the opening block quote tag, I could say site. 
And what I'm using is the HTML attribute with the value. And this is the link right there. Now let's go back to the browser. Let's go back to our page. Let's reload. And nothing's showing on the front end, but over here we see it's embedded within the content. Let's validate this. And we're looking good except for now we have this little warning here. It's because we have the HTML language attribute set to English and it's saying that it looks like we're using lorem ipsum. So we should use the ZXX. So I'll just copy that real quick. Go back to our editor. I'm going to go up to the top of the page and paste that there. Save it. Back to the browser. Reload. Validate that again. And again, no warnings. Okay, let's go back to our editor. And now let's say towards the bottom, we're going to put, first let's use our footer tag. Let's say we want to put in our address where people can get in touch with us or send us information. So we can say we're going to use our address HTML tag, and then we can put in our information here. Let's save that. So let's say you're going to put in your address. Let's go back to the browser. Let's see how that looks. Let's go back here. Remember, we put it towards the bottom. Let's reload. And now we have it there. And pretty much this is showing our information on one line. Now, if you wanted to have it go on to multiple lines, how we had it inside of the address tag, like how we have here, we can go back to our editor and we can use the BR tag that we saw before, the line break tag. Save that. Go back to our browser. Reload. And now we see that's on a new line on each of them. So that's the address tag. So we covered a lot in this video and there's definitely a lot more that we can go over in terms of formatting our content and our text. But for now, this is an overview of some of the most commonly used ones. In upcoming videos, we'll go over using lists, using links, and things of that nature. But those are going to be separate videos. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you be part of the community. And hit the notification icon so whenever I create a new video, you'll be notified. And as always, remember, you can always go to my website, pixamrub.com, and grab some of the code snippets from here to play around with. So thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding. Mm -hmm.